Welcome to the world, little goslings. So it looks like we had another batch of goslings hatch overnight. They're still hatching though, because you can see there's several eggs that are still in the process of opening up. Some of them have just emerged, some of them been out for a little while. I'm finding that with this incubator, the hatching process, you should give it about 24 to 48 hours. So I've got some new additions coming to the farm, but the problem I'm now facing is I gotta figure out where to put these guys. <laughs> Because as you can see, I already have one class of goslings hanging out inside here. And they are just a bit too big to be mixed with all the other goslings. But you're still very adorable, little guys. Release the quacking! <laughs> Get out of here, lady. <laughs> that buff goose seems to always want to nest right underneath the duck ramp. Morning, chickens. So last year I made a special purpose-built brooder shed. A shed specifically designed for raising baby birds. You can see it right here. Da -da -da -da. It's big enough to house many little baby birds. It's got an electrical plug right up there so I can get heat for lamps. It's got this main door for people access and it's got a bird door so I can let them out. And it even has a protected run that I can use to let teenage birds go out and be outside during the day, but then lock them back up at night. But as you can clearly see, the problem with that space right now is I've been using it as my winter chicken housing. Now my summer plan for housing the chickens is I wanna take one of these John Siskovich chicken tractors that I have and retrofit it as an egg layer coop. What that means is I wanna put roosts inside here and I wanna put a nesting box inside here and get it all ready so that the chickens can be in here. I also have to replace this tarp. It's seen some signs of age and it's ready to move on to another one. And so I've got a lot to do here on the farm today between cleaning out coops, fixing coops, and even moving little baby birds out to new coops. And I figured I'd just bring my trusty camera around to let you guys ride shotgun. Get in, loser, we're going shopping. How's it going, pal? You enjoying this nice spring morning? Now, a lot of productivity experts will tell you that you should always start your day with the worst task. So I guess it's time to uh, eat the frog. Okay, chickens, you gotta get out of here. Out you go, out you go. Come on, out you go. Dotty, Barty, out, out, out. You know, I say that cleaning out the brooder is the worst task, but it's not that bad. I mean, it's a little bit smelly. You should probably wear a mask because there's so much nitrogen from the chicken poop. You know, about a month ago, I cleaned out the entire duck house and that was disgusting. That was way worse than what I have to do with the chicken coop. The chicken coop's relatively easy. You know, they tend to even poop all in the same spot. The only downside is sometimes they poop in weird spots like the little shelves I have built into the brooder. Took a little time to clean that off. But all in all, this is one of those farm tasks where it's nice to just throw on a pair of headphones, listen to an audiobook, and get to work. And if you're curious about what book I'm listening to right now, I decided to go back and reread uh, Stephen King's Dark Tower series. I'm like on uh, book number four of that. There's just like a ton of uh, depth that I feel like I missed the first reading of it, so I'm, I'm really enjoying that. Okay, our setup looks like it's ready for some baby birds. I mean, this really is a, a spot that is purpose-built to be a brooder. You know, I've actually got this setup here that lets me have water sit on top of that platform and then all the water mess drips down. They've got nice, plenty of bedding everywhere. Instead of using the heat lamps, I use the heating plates the birds seem to do really well with them. Some of you might be wondering if they're too low. You actually want to be about that low, particularly when you have like day or two day old goslings. You want them to go underneath it like it's a mother bird. So that's about the right height for them. And then I've got the electrical right up there. So it's nice and easy to plug in the brooder plates. Then the other thing that I've added in as part of the brooder setup is I built this like little guard. That way I can open the door of the brooder and not have all the baby birds rush out. Ooh, I think I hear Canada geese coming. Wait, Toby, settle down. We don't want to scare them away. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty much why we haven't had any Canada geese this year. <laughs> they've come over and they've tried to stop, but Toby Dog has definitely been on the hunt. So my favorite model of chicken tractor is the John Siskovich stress-free chicken tractor. John is a farmer in Connecticut, really good dude, makes videos, but he also made this design and book for this chicken tractor, which is so flexible and so convenient. I've used it to raise ducks, geese, chickens. They take a little bit of work to build, but once you have it, they're very solid, very durable, very flexible because you can reconfigure them a number of different ways. And right now my plan today is I'm gonna 
replace the tarp, do any other little fix up items I might need to do to this thing. And then also put in some roosting bars as well as nesting boxes so it can be a mobile coop for my chickens. Hey little guys. So I know a lot of you guys have been wondering about the little gosling, the one with the bum leg. She's not doing great, but she's still hanging in there. Over the last several days, Allison and I have spent a lot of time trying to work with her and get her to sort of improve and feel better. But at this stage of the game, she's just very underdeveloped and so much smaller than her siblings that I'm very worried about her. She's eating and she's doing what she needs to do, but she's still struggling to walk. Like you compare her to the other birds, it's just a huge difference. But that said, I've been trying to get her outside every day, doing some little physical therapy with her, getting her working and playing around with her brothers and sisters, and also making sure that she eats properly. I'm not 100% sure of her chances of survival because she is so much smaller than the other birds, but we're gonna do our best to try to keep her healthy and help her grow and hopefully turn into a nice happy adult bird. You're enjoying the sunshine, huh? It's a beautiful day. And all this grass. Fresh water. All right, let me make you some food slurry. Yeah, one of the biggest things with her is just making sure she gets good nutrition. I built like a little straw apparatus to help her with her leg, but I don't know, it seemed to actually be making her worse and move around less. And at this stage, I'm just trying to get her to move more and more. I mean, her siblings are like healthy, more robust goslings of more than a week old. They're showing all the things and signs that I'd want to see, but I'm still just a little bit worried about her. She's just not nearly as energetic, curious, large, or healthy. The gold gosling turd right there. Come on, little one. So I was just doing my gooseling physical therapy and it started to rain, so I gotta bring these guys inside. I already got the other two in. This one was still out. He's an energetic one. Okay, back down you go. I'm still very worried about her or him. I don't know how this is gonna turn out. Don't worry, you're not traveling far. Don't worry, little ones, we're going to your new home. This is gonna be very exciting. Just starting up dinner back there. <laughs> The next class, Toby. Okay guys, here you go. Time to get out. Out you go. And get you a little drink of water. Yeah, you got some water. You got food, but you just probably wanna run around here. How about you? You wanna drink of water? There you go. Got some water for you. How about you, little one? There you go. They're interesting, aren't they, Toby? Yeah, these are your little ones. These are your ones you protect. Ooh, you're just freshly dried off. Just a little crusty. Put you closer to the heat. 
You last too. There you go. Some water. There you go. There you go. Everybody's out. Been a big day for you guys. I know a lot of change, a lot of movement. Yeah, you can go under here. Okay. Yep, that's like the mommy goose. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So another eleven. It looked like there were a couple more that were hatching, but a lot of these guys have been out for more than 24 hours now, and so I wanted to get them out of there. Hopefully a couple more hatch. Oh, you guys are so adorable. Oh, you guys are curious about what's going on? Exploring the world? Here. For day one, I'm gonna leave your food and water down here. It's not too much of a mess you can make. And there we have it. The next class of goslings getting started here at Goldshaw Farm. Now I know that you guys have seen me doing some incubations, but if you're curious to see what it's like to hatch goslings naturally, you should watch this video over here. I think you guys are gonna really enjoy it. And I'm gonna enjoy just watching these guys get to know the world. Ha, 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 ha.